Hi, I'm Bob Taper with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to further extend the capabilities of our grouped items page, the start page in our app, by adding semantic zoom. Now, you can think of semantic zoom as yet another view of our start page. We've already looked at the various states that were managed by the view state manager, but when it comes to the semantic zoom, it's going to be a little bit different. It's, it's actually really easy to implement. So what is semantic zoom exactly? Well, if we were to take a look at, for example, the sports app, and uh, we were to just see here uh, all the information that's displayed, what I can do is uh, either use a pinching motion, if I were to use like a tablet like the Microsoft Surface in order to, to zoom in or zoom out of the and get a different level of detail. And you can, if you're using a keyboard mouse, you can hold down the control key on the keyboard and then use the scroll wheel to kind of duplicate that. Here on the simulator, there's also a neat little device. You can use this little pinch zoom touch mode, and that gives you these two little circles with, um, with crosses in the middle. And the idea here is if I were to hold my mouse cursor down, you can see they kind of change to a filled in uh, state. And then I use my mouse uh, wheel to, uh, to pinch in. You can see I'm now looking at a very high level view of all of the uh, the stories on uh, the news app or I can use the reverse and uh, get back into a, a more uh, detailed look so I can simulate that pinching motion uh, just using the simulator and so at in this level if I wanted to see just the news I could just click that and then go and see just the news part again all right so we're gonna accomplish something like that in our app by adding simply adding a uh, semantic zoom control and then making a few little modifications here and there. It's really neat. Okay, so let's get back. Actually, let's get out of this and into that. Great. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio on the grouped items page, and this is the only page we're gonna do this for, uh, and it makes sense to do it for this. And what we wanna do is actually look at our lab. We're in lab two, orientation, snapping, and semantic zoom, exercise three, semantic zoom, task number one. And it asks us to, to uh, replace the grid view with this new grid view. But there's really not a whole lot of differences here to the grid view itself. It's just what we're enclosing the grid view inside of. Notice that we're adding a semantic zoom and we're setting it in grid row number one. Okay, and then we're adding a semantic zoom dot zoomed in view and then a semantic zoomed zoomed out view where we define another grid view. It's just going to have uh, uh, a smaller data template that's uh, defined right in line. And in that data template, you can see that we're gonna use a group image as well as the title and recipe count uh, instead of all the information that we display the uh, larger image for each individual recipe item. We're just gonna display group image instead of individual recipe items like are defined here in our, um, in our grid view that we have right now with our item template, okay? So we're just gonna blow away everything that's already there. Let's go ahead and just copy this whole section and we're gonna replace our existing item grid view. And it pains me to do this because we've, we've looked at it so much and done so much, but you have to sometimes rip it down to build it back up again. And so there we go. All right, let's look at the instructions. All right, so near the bottom of the grouped items page, find the visual state element named snap and add the following statements to the snap storyboard to hide the zoomed out view whenever the app is snapped. All right, fair enough, that makes sense. So here we go, let's just actually use the copy code and we're looking for the visual state snapped. All right, and we're gonna add this new object animation using keyframes. And so we're going to take the group grid view and set it to collapsed whenever we're in snapped mode. Okay. 
All right, and then the last thing that we're asked to do is to go into the load state method and add this at the very end. So let's look at the code behind for our page. So here, let's go to grouped items, uh, the grouped items page, and we're looking for the load state. And we're gonna set the group grid view dot item source equals. So notice what we're doing here. We are kind of circumventing the default view model and setting the item source manually. And so this is a second way. We don't have to use all the plumbing in the default view model and the collection view source and things of that nature. We can just, for a given grid view or list view, we can set its item source to a collection, which we've done right here. All right, so let's go ahead and run it in the simulator. And the key to this, I think, is to have your fingers far enough away uh, from each other. Otherwise, you're not going to get that action. You need them kind of far. And maybe not touching something here. Let's try this. There we go. Nice. Okay. I also want to point out one other thing, too. There's a little... Um, if you're having a hard time getting that to work... You can, there's this little minus sign in the lower right-hand corner. You can get it to uh, to go into semantic zoom mode that way as well. And then go back to the regular mode. Okay? Very, very cool. And that's all we have to do. Uh, no other custom code or is required to respond to the touch-based gestures on the tablet or its corresponding keyboard and mouse equivalent. You just basically create... Uh, semantic zoom controls with two different versions one for the zoomed in and one for the zoomed out and you're good to go so like i promised changes are now coming to our app very quickly because we got the co foundational concepts under our belt we're making these tiny changes but they have these huge uh, impacts on making it feel very much like a windows 8 application all right so the app itself is looking good good it's responding uh, to the user's whims uh, so now we want to start integrating it into the rest of Windows 8 to integrate searching and sharing, which brings us to lab number three in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thank you.